Hi, Sean. Hey, Tara. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, so, okay. So everyone to start us off tonight. Uh, my name is Tara Westerman. I'm the former managing director of Vivian Art and very pleased to be welcoming you all to the fourth and final, unfortunately, in a series of Instagram live chats with each of the four artists featured in the gallery's current exhibition, Abstraction to the Power of Four. This exhibition is presented on occasion of Vivian Art's exhibitor participation with Art Toronto 2020. And tonight I have the wonderful opportunity with talking with one of the included artists, Sean Evans. Uh, so Sean Evans holds a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Alberta University of the Arts. And his work has been the subject of numerous group and solo exhibitions across Canada. It has held the many private collections and the permanent collections of corporate and public institutes, including the collection of Jim and Susan Hill Hill, sorry, Jim and Susan Hill of the Esker Foundation, Air Canada, and Field Law Calgary. And he currently lives and works in Toronto, where he is connecting with us now. Just a good, uh, warm day. <laughs> Wonderful. Beautiful day, yeah. Well, this yeah. is your last one. You've done so awesome on these, Tara. Oh, it's thanks really so much, Sean. It's really been, uh, it's been so much fun to connect with each and every one of you. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to connect again, but... Um, yeah, it's been my pleasure. I've always come out with these conversations of uh, like something great to have known about each of you again, and like a little bit of a snippet into what you're working on. So it's been really mm -hmm. special for me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've I've thoroughly enjoyed watching them. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, for our chat tonight, um, I'm going to start us off with kind of what I first learned about you. So we started working together in 2014. And in meeting you then and getting to, little, uh, getting to know about your work, I understood that you were using your own photographs as influence and source material, and that these, along with the color and architecture that interested you, were informing much of your paintings that oscillated between abstraction and representation. So I'd, I'd like to kind of use these elements as, as we work through some of the the concerns that you have at the moment right now or things that you're working through or or new components that have new elements that have made a, additional meaning uh to you and how those have altered a little bit or not um so yeah i i guess we could start with maybe the use of the personal photographs is that still something that you you rope into your practice yeah as you were talking i was I was trying to put something loosely together in my head about what I wanted to say, but that I, that really has been the one consistency along the six six seven years since we've known each other. Mm -hmm. um, in my my paintings, as I as I've been with the gallery, um, I guess how they've changed is that before I was I was really looking at them with, into ways into myself, where now I'm I'm trying to use those experience to reach outward and to see if there is some, something universal between what I am seeing and what other people are, are seeing, can they, are they the same? Are they different? Um, does that make sense? I mean, in terms of, of trying course. to, trying to project my experience into the world. Cause I found, cause I've, in the world we live today, like reality has become so subjective. Um, we can see it on the news right now in terms of. Yeah, it's wild. This, we're, we're all experiencing the same thing, but there's two completely different narratives happening at the same time that couldn't be any more opposite. So mm -hmm. I guess in some ways that, that those are things that I'm thinking about in here when I'm making these paintings and it's sort of, how can I look within my own experience, something that I know absolutely, but how can, can I translate, can I translate that to other people? Can I translate that to mean something completely differently? Can I really, can I really speak to um, I guess the world as I know it or thought I knew it. Um, Are you using, again. oh, sorry. No. I was just, <laughs> again, no, I was wondering if you are using mostly very current photographs. I asked that question specifically because your experience, of course, as of late must have been, and, and how you were documenting it uh, has, has great, you have a family now. Is what I'm mm -hmm. trying to get at, as opposed yeah. to 2014, you know, have right. you have a family. So if, if your photographs are capturing some of those moments too, I wonder how that might also be translating through your works. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, I guess there's there's more people in the photograph. Um, sometimes, I mean, it's often it's often the case where I'm painting my wife out of things, which is oh. what she always sort of jokes about because she she's got this inside scoop as to what happens in here. Because um, I've really had, like I mean, you brought up architecture, but it's really been this um, focus on on my um, surroundings or this more objective view of the world like the things that are absolute like architecture where where now Jordan's commenting <laughs> where now um as I'm bringing I guess now I'm more comfortable using my own photographs or I, or I sort of want that subjectivity to seep in and the the paintings are less in a formal way about things like architecture and have be, become I think or I'd like to communicate more experiential things um, like seeing a bunch of people walk down the street or I guess the the individual themselves or can you bring these individual narratives into the paintings um, but it's, it's always been the case where I really haven't painted people um, mm -hmm. um, although although as I've thought about this work more like in some ways this is they, they I wonder if these are self-portraits these paintings are all sort of self-portraits um, so I guess they've, there's been a lot that's changed in the last couple of years as my as as the family's come along here and, and grown. But um, I'm gonna have to chew on that question a little bit longer, Tara, because I'm not <laughs> I'm not sure if I answered it or how I. No, how you I did uh, absolutely because I think as soon as you uh, were mentioning your paintings as self-portraits, I think it's interesting in that if these are what they are, then the self-portrait isn't uh, as you might normally. A, think of a self-portrait of a reflection of the painter or the artist themselves, but it is a self-portrait in as much as you are painting your view of your experience or your immediate surroundings. So it's, I, it could translate as a kind of portrait, absolutely. It's just like you're looking through your eyes instead of into them. Right, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> that I, think, that's a good, I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, a lot of these photos are taking are taken when I'm when I'm traveling and when when I'm looking at a lot of art mm -hmm. um, that I'm sort of seeing the world in a new way or being somewhere for the first time. Um, I've actually pulled out some old photographs that I've even used in shows um, with Vivian back in like 2014, 15. Mm -hmm. um, some of the work that you would have would have just known, but I, I mean, I, that's another fascinating sort of way to think about. Um, how we perceive the world like this like there is a way that there is this building of my ontology or the way that I've sort of um, it made my experience of the world through you know photographs that I've taken 10 years ago versus versus ones now and sort of trying to mash those together and, and I think that creates some interesting things in the process as I'm painting like it brings up more than I mean it becomes much more than just looking at a photograph and painting it right like it really becomes trying to get at that experience or that memory um, which I think that like that's a fun thing about abstract painting is you can really dig into those loose sort of things about our experience or how the way we we can we sort of move through the world or envision the world or want to make up mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know that when we had uh, last spoken to, you were talking that as of late, in addition to the use of your own photographs, you were also starting to look at your older paintings and bringing elements of those into your your current and future work. So to to use those as, as a source materials too, because of course they've been uh, a part of what you've been experiencing. They have, is that... Is that uh, is there a different vocabulary coming up for you as you, you look to those older works? I, I think, I mean, it's interesting to just take that vocabulary um, and sort of just use it as it is or as it was and, and know that for me it's changed or certain things about it is, have changed. But um, I think they, in some ways, like it's, it's trying to get deeper into the work. Um, how, can you know, how can you know something more? Um, I guess that's where I in using perspective in this in these paintings like perspective's always been something that's really important but as we learn more about something like we we can we go sort of deeper mm -hmm. and and less things become maybe become important or we don't see them as well but you can like really dig into something so in some ways i've wanted to put those blinders on 
and just really sort of tackle and dig into previous paintings and see if there's anything left there to sort of bring out. Um, they also become, there's also like this one, you're, like I'm taking another, uh, another step away from that sort of original point of memory or that original experience or taking that photograph and I'm sort of making something from a painting or, or using that again to go sort of further and just continually moving sort of away from you know what it must have been that I experienced the first time that I was there but that that's been lost and now it's sort of just what I'm interested in doing now mm -hmm. and then uh and then there's color of course of color yeah. I'm guessing is still a very important element for for your work yeah yeah has a, definitely has the specific role that it has changed for you like what what you take from or use color for? Um, yeah, I guess, I, I mean, some ways I've been less afraid of color as I've, as I've continued to paint. I think it was always, this, it was a struggle since I started as a painter. And, and I think now, like, I'm, I'm much more comfortable taking a cadmium red and just putting it on the canvas, where I feel like previously I would have always wanted to mix that. Um, and I mean, it, lately it's really been referencing other, other art historical um, works or br trying to reference things through color, if I can, reference painting through color. Um, sort of just to, like in this, I guess I'm talking as, as a painter, as I'm working, like things that I'm sort of trying to progress through or move through or, or not just to have color reference, reference a, a place. Mm -hmm. or a sky or a land but also can I can I shift can I shift some of those references to other things I know you were talking that uh, John's Jasper John's that is is uh is, is coming in for for you as a very important influence right now and I know that some of the works that you produced for the abstraction to the power of four were very very evocative of his uh graphic inclusion of, of numbers and symbols and those kinds of things. Are there other artists in that periphery or, or elsewhere that you're looking to right now? What's funny, I guess what's funny about those two paintings, and I haven't said this yet, but in February, I was really lucky. My the, Our family went down to Los Angeles for three weeks and it was like right before the pandemic, right? And it was like three weeks down there. I looked at so much art and I've been to LA a few times now and I seem to always see more and more Jasper John's paintings when I'm down there. So it was, it was interesting as just in that, that though, that was sort of the last painting I saw in real life and got back here and started working. Um, and when I sort of put that painting together, it wasn't purposeful, but when I saw sort of an image in that painting, I thought of John's and I've been thinking more about bringing these art historical references into the works and that sort of clicked for me. And then it became sort of iterating on that Jesper or sort of trying to use that reference to trigger something. Um, and sort of in a way take away compositional sort of problems and just focus on things like color or trying to trying to cue other things in in viewers with a say title like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, to get into I guess a, a bigger topic I know that well you alluded to this already that you're trying to map a reality that is unstable at best as we're currently living and uh, and how you have used your, your painting to evoke and work through some of those things. And you had said that layers, of course, were becoming increasingly important for you. So is that, is that kind of where that's coming through? It's this simultaneous trying to map the unknowable, but also veil it. Right. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think you said that really well. Um, oh, thank you. I would, <laughs> I would, I, I, on another, on another foot, like I, these paint like there's there's something that I think happened with with these paintings in particular that that really spoke to the use of paint um, in ways that I haven't done before. Like they're um, really glossy. Like those two paint the two smaller paintings titled after John's. Like one is that's red that's very glossy and luscious, and the other one is completely flat and sort of scraped away. And um, I mean, in some ways that was a challenge in the studio, like just playing with the materials and trying to speak them to the materials themselves. Mm -hmm. Have you, and you've always painted with oils, correct? Yeah. 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 Is it there's just a much more fluid media for you? We can like have more time to play 
or work yeah, it? I think I, I think so. Yeah, I th- yeah. yeah. And I think I can't some of these bit like the the larger painting in the show. I, I don't think I, I don't know how I'd make those marks with with acrylic paint. Mm-hmm. Like there's some things where I'm mixing different oils and just sort of allowing that that to be on the canvas and allowing that to act like that veil of just sort of disguising what's maybe behind it or know that you're looking through something onto something else. Mm -hmm. I know we were talking too about your like an interesting view on on efficiency how 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 efficiently you can produce a desired result that even though it feels faster than you might like to think of it um is it, it doesn't have to be a long, prolonged challenge for every painting to come out uh, successfully. Well, I, I, like, again, I'm basically just, equating value to time. I know you had mentioned that that was I think, something that I, was... I think all artists battle with that in the studio. And I've been, mm-hmm. I've been trying to get faster because, again, like these paintings have been so laborious over the past couple of years. Like, I've really needed to paint one, two, three times. You know, I've had to put so much on the canvas before it was like, oh, okay, now I know what to do. And then it turns into something. And so I guess just from a tech, like just again, like in my own head when I'm in here making these paintings, stepping back at looking, looking at them is just like that outcome. How can I possibly get to there faster? Like, you know, can I, can I stop, um, you know, killing myself in here, making all these paintings and then making them again and again and again, like, is that part, I guess the, the question about that is like, is that the, the part that's really important? Is that what makes these paintings? Or, or can I get to that final outcome a little bit quicker? Um, mm-hmm. So I've sort of been cha- challenging myself with that in a way. Um, and, that, and that brings on levels of risk because when you do, when you do throw down a veil of paint at the end and you and you know this is going to be a final layer and then you just you're going to have to let it be what it's going to be um i've been really uncomfortable with that process you know or Mm -hmm. uncomfortable with um not letting myself go back in and and rework something um and trying I, i mean we refer to this on on our monday conversation but just once once a painting sort of spurs me forward with with some new ideas or things that i want to do to it i've been trying to put that aside and and try to take those ideas and put them on a different canvas and sort of work simultaneously on the one that um has already been started and then to start a to start a new one sort of in the same vein but can i push it further which way can i you know which different ways can i take that sort of Mm -hmm. same idea or that same reference point um just to further build build on it so you like you work on them simultaneously so you have the one not completely finished before you jump into the next yeah there's there's many there's there's lots in the go in in here at the same time yeah Yeah. uh so we have a question come through from david he says your personal archive photos precious paintings are central to the creation of your work have you considered using other archives and or other artists city archives as the basis for future work. Um, so other kinds of archives. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I haven't got there yet. Like I haven't got there yet. I think that's a really interesting research question to think about in the future. But yeah, I mean, I can't, I, I just haven't got there yet. It's funny how, again, these have been laborious paintings. I don't know how many, I, I mean, there's maybe, you know, on a good year, I can put like 10, 20 paintings forward. Mm -hmm. um or what did I say 10 to 12 paintings like not like not you know one painting a month Mm -hmm. the small one's not really counting because I do those as as I go but um it's been a slow process and when you have to think through the process of painting like it's just it's such a slower elongated process I can't I can't figure these things out until I've got a few canvases to step back and and look at Mm -hmm. when uh when a work leaves your studio say if it's like on its way to Calgary and then you you're able to go to the opening and you see it maybe uh six to eight weeks later have you ever had an experience where you come across a work and you should have done this or it's like it's still missing something of course I'm sure you don't have to say anything to that degree but have you ever had that experience before yeah 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 that's right yeah, I think you always want to change the even like when you we'll look back at this video maybe in two years, Tara, and we'll we'll sort of shake our heads as to why we 
said something a certain way or, or whatnot. I think it's similar with going back and looking at older paintings. Yeah. I mean, it's nice when that doesn't happen. That's happened a couple of times when I'm really happy with something that I've seen years down the road, but. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, of course you are, you're so involved and, and you spend enough time with each work that probably feels like you can, you can continue to ruminate on them. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, easily. Yeah. yeah. So Sarah, but I, have, asks, I guess, oh. con guess conversely, if I, if I could just add to that, cause I was, I've been mm. thinking about the next body of work or like sort of what I want to do next. And I almost want, so instead of pulling in all these other archival um, or other reference points is to actually just deal with like almost a smaller fixed set of um, photographs or things, things to use sort of limit, you know, what can I make out of the show if I'm only looking at six things? Um, how many different ways can I sort of iterate on that or try to express the same that same concept or that same idea. So it'll be more focused exploration probably then for using yeah. a very limited set of materials, source yeah. materials that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I have like in a lot of ways, like really let that, um, we were spoke, speaking about collage before. Cause in a way, as I make these things, like it is this collage process of like grabbing something off my desk here and just like bringing it forward. Like this makes sense on this painting and trying to get it, get it down quickly, throwing it back on the bench, maybe pulling a different photo um, forward or, or as I'm looking through some of the art books in here, um, trying to take colors out or realizing there's color schemes happening and how can I make that better or, or, or sort of pull that back. Mm -hmm. I think in the same vein, uh, Sarah asked a question to Sarah Nordine about, is it about giving yourself permission to be finished and to trust yourself? Right. I guess, um, you have to, yeah, I guess trust yourself to know that if you have an inkling that it's done, then that's, that's what it is. Yeah. That yeah, must be, that's yeah. pretty huff. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think when I was a younger painter, like it's all, it, it was, it was, as we were talking about time, it was always a time thing. It was almost like you'd have to have so many hours in something before it could necessarily be done. But then you, you, you get to a mark and you realize this painting should have been done, you know, after the first day that I was working on it, instead of just trying to get through, to get there through the, through the process of time rather than just, letting the, the painting be what it would, you know, what it, what it could have been, you know? Um, yeah. You were talking, letting, to, letting pain act as, yeah. And you were talking to in the same, no, I'm sorry. Uh, about going back to like a painting maybe that you were fighting with or that wasn't going so well. And then making a couple of other extra marks that you thought were just going to, like you'll just, you'll just see it's going to be a, a chance effort and that they just <laughs> weren't destroyed. Yeah. But then also, uh, probably work the other direction too, that they just turned into something like beyond your expectations. Right. Yeah. That, so that, that, that does happen sometimes where it's, where it's, it has been beyond my expectations. And then other times, I, I mean, I shouldn't say destroyed because the thing is like, I, I just pick it up and I put it in the pile over there. And then at some point in the future, I'll be rifling through these smaller canvases and be like, Oh, this put it up on the wall and then like go over it again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's so. good. Um, I'm going to get into Lane's question too. So Lane asks as an artist, or he says, as an artist who is working with slower process, uh, do you see that as an activist stance against a world that is moving so fast? I, I guess like the opposite of that, like, because the world is moving fast, I want to move faster in here. Um, mm. does that make sense? I mean, there's, there's, because, because everything is thrown at us all at once. And there's there's less care for actually getting it right, or again, this sort of leads back to this this state of reality, whether it's um, and how unbalanced we feel. Like there's just there's so much happening all at once. Like I I kind of want to communicate those things with these paintings, um, or I'm trying to. Those are those are sort of ideas that I'm grappling with as I as I paint them. Um, but it. it but going the other way, like, is, is really compelling, too. Like, I've seen work that goes the other way. And... To, like, try and slow down. To try and slow down. I, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm hoping that the final reading of these paintings can be a bit slow. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's always, it, like, it's just impossible to think about the viewer, ultimately. But I want, you know, I wonder how some of these works are received versus, versus ones in the past that have maybe taken longer to paint. Mm -hmm. You think there's a little bit more of a, a viewer gratitude of impression 
maybe if they're uh if you're harnessing more of a of a feeling or a of or a of a gesture perhaps than uh a specific representation of uh a place or a building uh it seems right. that if you're it seems that as you're going into this this unstableness that you are also then relying more on on gestures that are not concrete perhaps mm -hmm. yeah and i sense. hope i hope these have an edge to psychology to them like when you when they're looked at as opposed to sort of the formal concerns that um were really really important in the past um and i've tried to then use those formal concerns or to, to use architecture itself to actually paint a very specific building and then try to have that jump off into you know what is that building what did it mean what what was the intent what was the arch what were the, what were the architects thinking like what was the sort of political movement that it might have come out with and um and that yeah, yeah and i i guess i i'm trying to skip sort of that formal process um with these paintings and can i just sort of dig right into those sort of psychological questions of like what is this what does it mean um yeah yeah uh, I think Darby Milbrath, Milbrath read my mind. I was going to ask this too. Uh, so how do you go about starting a painting? Well, it has, I mean, again, this is the, the reliance on the photograph and in the past of like, just trying to get something down on the canvas, whether it's a color or whether it is that rough composition of the photograph that I'm looking at, um, which is still the case when I'm putting something down, it's, it's trying to get that sense of, that sense of place or sort of that fixation and, into into experience or or that thing that is representational and then i can work from that and either move, move into it or or sort of move away away from it and bring in other other photographs or other experiences mm -hmm. but it so very much is is just like sort of getting rid of the white just like getting something on really quick which these paintings behind me i so I, try, I try to do two things at once i'm just like putting up putting a place down but also putting colors and, and wanting to keep both at the end of the day as opposed to in the past, just wanting to get a color down that I hope at the end of the painting, you know, some of it is going to show through. Does putting an initial gestures and color on a painting, regardless of if they come through to the end, uh, just make it a little less daunting? Right. Yeah. yeah it can dig yeah. into it a little bit quicker. Right. Start thinking white... about those things as opposed to, yeah, the, the painting that's going to be ahead of me. Yeah. So you are responding to your... Your, your colors and the gestures as you go, in addition to having your source, source material there with you too. It's a bit of a right. play, I take it? It's a bit of play, and that's the struggle, right? That's like, how do I make these paintings faster without losing, I think, what, what can be compelling about them, which is these layers underneath or the things that have happened before that somehow still make their way to the surface. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's like the, yeah, again, talking as the painter in the studio, like the things that I'm really fixated on as I'm making these works. Okay, well, these are great questions, everyone. So yeah, please, if, if anyone else has another question to you to, to ask, then, then please send through. But uh, do you have any plans for kind of what you'd like to see for your next works? I, not really. I mean, I spoke to it a little bit earlier, just in terms of like trying to really narrow in on, on some subject matter and then just seeing how much I can how, seeing how far I can take that through a number of different paintings. Mm -hmm. And again, there... to, like to try to comment on that idea that like everything is happening so quick today that there's, there's so many different ways to understand like what's happening in the world or, or different ways to, to see something like, can I, can I try to communicate that through the, through the process of painting or, or that can come across that, that idea of confusion or that um, sort of, unbalanced that I'm feeling right now sort of as a person moving through the world like these these are you know crazy they seem like crazy times but yeah. does your studio provide a grounding space for you where you can maybe feel like you understood a little bit more after after you've been painting or working yeah I think so. I mean it's a nice consistency like it's it's the hat you know that and again to just come in here close the door and just know that ahead of me in the day is, is just going to be painting um so that's a really nice feeling a sort of sanctuary of sorts yeah mm -hmm. oh, that's perfect it's very important these days 
Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, I think uh, I've asked all my questions, certainly, and very glad that everyone has been able to, to chime in where they've, they've wanted to contribute to. So I think this has been great, unless there's something yeah, else thanks, that you'd Tara. like to, to share with us. No. I don't think so. <laughs> That's fair. That's okay. I feel talked out. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay. Uh, it's Friday night. So I hope you have a very good weekend and thank you so you much for, well. for joining me today and everyone else for tuning in with us too. It's been great. Yes. Thanks everyone. Perfect. Have a great night, everyone. And you too, Sean. Bye. Bye.